Hello friends, welcome back to another video. So, today I'd like to talk about the Fibonacci sequence and I'd like to start it off um, by giving just an, you know, an explicit solution for, um, for a member of the sequence. So, uh, the Fibonacci sequence is defined in this following way. You take, um, you take two consecutive members and you add them together, you get the third one, uh, with the initial conditions being that the zeroth um, member and the first member are zero and one respectively. So for example, right one would get F2 is one, F3 is two, F4 is three, F5 is five, etc. <clears throat> Right, so um, what I'd like is I'd like to get something like fn is some function, let's call it g, of n. So I get it explicitly from just plugging in the value of n. Um, and to do this, um, I have two ways that I'd like to present. Today we'll do the first one. So matrix method. Okay. How is this going to work? So we're going to have something like the following. I'm going to express fn and fn plus 1 in terms of fn minus 1 and fn, and then a linear combination. So what linear combination? Well, exactly this one, right? So fn plus 1 is fn minus 1 plus fn. So I need to have 1, 1, right? And then fn is just fn. So I disregard the first term and I take the second term. And now I'm going to call this matrix X. And I can see that I can keep doing this. So uh, recursively, I'm going to get X times X times Fn minus two, Fn minus one, and so on. And actually X to the nth power, zero, one. Okay, this is nice. So now, all that will remain is to calculate xn and then I will get fn or fn plus 1 via a very easy multiplication, right? <laughs> Just 0 and 1. So what is xn? Well, xn is, as you can see, not a diagonal matrix, but if it were diagonal, the power would be very easy to take, right? Because suppose we have a d that's like lambda 1, lambda 2, then a d to the n is just lambda 1 to the n, lambda 2 to the n. Uh, but of course, x is diagonalizable because um, determinant of x is minus 1 and trace of x is 1. And um, okay, so it's diagonalizable. We have. Um, we have from this um, its eigenvalues as well. So you might refer to a previous video of mine if, if you're not familiar how to take um, <clears throat> eigenvalues of a two by two matrix, but it's going to be, um, so this is the trace and then the determinant times minus four. And we get uh, one plus minus square root five over two, which um, are the golden ratio numbers, right? So. In particular, I can choose lambda 1 is phi, and lambda 2 is phi bar, uh, with uh, phi equals 1 plus square root 5 over 2, and phi bar equals 1 minus square root 5 over 2. Okay, so we have the eigenvalues of, of um, x, and that means that we can write uh, x as t d t inverse with, um, with d equals phi, phi bar, zero, zero. Okay, and t uh, is some unitary transformation. So t will consist of the two eigenvectors of um, x. And so let's find t, let's, let's eat our vegetables right away, even though Normally, you, you might leave this for later. So we want um, x ab to be uh, phi ab. That'll be the first. 
<clears throat> the first entry, the first column of D. Um, so, okay, let's do this. Um, what do we get? We get 0, 1, 1, 1, A, B. That's uh, equal to B, A plus B. And this should be equal to phi A, B. Well, um, that means that B is phi A. And if I choose, because, you know, um, I can choose any um, scale for my eigenvector. So I could choose that A, uh, I could choose that B is equal to one, right? It's, it's equivalent to pulling out B and then having something like this. Um, the, it's just the direction that matters. So I can choose B to be equal to one. If I choose B to be equal to one, that means that um, maybe it's easier to choose A equals one. Yeah, it's easier to choose A equals one. So that means that B is phi. So we choose A equals one, B equals phi. Um, does that work? Do we then have A plus B equals phi B? So we would have one plus phi equals phi squared. Indeed, uh, this is true because that's exactly the equation we got it from. Um, yeah, you, you can verify this, of course, by squared minus phi minus y equals zero. You'll see that um, it's exactly this that you get from the quadratic formula. Um, okay, so that's good. And um, so one of our eigenvectors is phi is uh, one phi. And uh, the other one um, is gonna be the same, just uh, one phi bar probably. Well, let's let's verify. So let's say CD should be phi bar uh, CD. Um, so again, I'll choose uh, C equals one, which will mean that um, D equals phi bar and C plus D equals phi bar squared. Uh, this is one, one plus phi bar equals phi bar squared. Yep, it's all good. Okay, so that means that T will be one phi, one phi bar. Okay. Uh, we can also get T inverse. So it's the determinant of T. And then um, these two guys switch places, go on the diagonal, and these two guys switch signs. The determinant of t is what? It's phi bar minus phi. So perhaps I can switch the sign and write here minus phi bar one phi minus one. Okay. Um, and now we'll keep that for later. And now let's find, um, well, what's x to the n? Well, that's t, d, t inverse to the n. But that's, you know, that's simple enough because that's like t, d, t inverse, t, d, t inverse, t, d, t inverse, n times. Uh, and you can see that the uh, t and t inverse always cancel. So you just get t d to the n t inverse. Um, of course, this is general property. Um, and that means that we will get t phi to the n phi bar to the n zero zero t inverse. Um, and now all that remains is to calculate this. Simple enough. Um, So let's see, we need to have T here. And then D to the N and then T inverse. And we also shouldn't forget about the determinant of T. 
So here, phi minus phi bar. Mm -hmm. Right, so I hate matrix multiplication. So we get phi n as the first entry uh, of this. Maybe, maybe let's do it like this. So this is phi n, then phi bar n, then phi n plus one, and phi bar n plus one. And now we multiply these two. So it'll be one over phi minus phi bar. And then we have phi n, phi, uh, sorry, phi n phi bar. phi bar n phi, uh, plus, yeah, plus phi bar n phi. Then it's just phi n minus phi n bar. Mm -hmm. Then it's minus phi n plus one phi bar plus phi phi bar n plus one and then phi n plus one minus phi bar n plus one okay and now recall that we have phi n phi n plus one equals x to the n zero one so we can we can calculate that x to the n zero one. Um, in particular, we're interested in what phi n plus one is. So perhaps I'll write it like this. This is x one one x two two oh, x one two x two one x two two times zero one. Mm, okay, I'll write n, but you you understand how the powers work here. Um, Maybe, maybe like this. Okay, uh, so this means that fn plus one is just xn two two, or well, fn, fn is just xn one two, maybe better. Uh, this means that fn is so we just read it off. It's phi minus phi bar over phi n minus phi bar n. That's it. So um, yeah, we can also simplify this as um, square root five, but that's it. <clears throat> that's the explicit value of fn for each n plugged in. Um, we can try this out, but um, yeah, it's a little bit tedious. Um, I wouldn't try it out for the first three, let's say, but after then it gets tedious to, to write out. So like Fn would be, F1 would be one, right? Because this just cancels like this. Uh, F2 would be um, F minus F bar, F plus F bar over F minus F bar. So I just did, yeah, you see what I did? Um, and therefore I would get f plus f bar, which is one half plus one half, which is one. Um, f3, uh, I'm also going to factor, so I'm going to do this, right? Let's just make sure that's correct. So um, if you multiply phi here and phi, phi bar, we need squares, yeah. Um, yeah, that should be good. Yeah. Um, so, so that gives us, um, phi squared and this is just minus one because it's the determinant of X. Um, plus phi squared. Now we can plug in what phi squares are. Um, so phi squared minus one is phi and uh, phi bar squared is phi bar, uh, sorry, minus phi bar minus one, phi minus phi bar is, well, that's not looking good, right? Um, 
what's what's going wrong here? Yeah, this is minus y. Uh, there we go. Uh, it can't can't all be minus though. Um. Oh, okay, it's it's is it all plus? Yeah, it's all plus. Um, so that's two. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, and so on. <laughs> As you can see, the calculation isn't actually simpler. It just looks mathematically nicer. Yep, but there you go. Hope you guys like this one. Stay tuned for the next one.